Welcome to Echo Management's podcast, Disease Du Jour, where each podcast will delve into the research and current best practices for a variety of equine health and veterinary industry topics with industry experts. I'm your host, Kim Brown, publisher of Echo Management. Today's guest is Dr. Raul Bras. Dr. Bras grew up in Puerto Rico, where he bred and showed Pasofino horses. He finished his undergraduate studies in Louisiana State University with a bachelor's in animal science. He graduated from Ross Veterinary School in 2005 and completed his clinical year at Auburn University. In 2005, Dr. Bross completed a surgery internship at Rudin Riddle Equine Hospital, and he stayed on as an assistant veterinarian in the podiatry department at Rudin Riddle. Dr. Bross completed his farrier program at Cornell University in 2007, and in 2010 became a certified journeyman farrier of the American Farriers Association. In 2012, he became a shareholder at Rudin Riddle Equine Hospital. In addition to providing his expertise in the equine podiatry in Lexington, Kentucky, Dr. Bross travels to states such as Ohio, Minnesota, South Carolina, Florida, and New York on a monthly basis. He also travels internationally to South America and Europe. Dr. Bross is devoted to the betterment of vet farrier relationships and is an active participant in industry associations such as AAEP, NEAEP, where he is the current president, AAPF, and AFA. In 2015, Dr. Bross was inducted into the International Equine Veterinarian Hall of Fame. Thank you, Dr. Bross, for joining us today on Disease Du Jour to talk about veterinary farrier relationship. Thank you, Kim. And let's start first about why is it important to build a good relationship between veterinarians and farriers? I mean, bottom line, the, the well-being of the horse, it's, it's, it relies completely on that relationship. Not just your veterinarian, but also your farrier. And that's been one of the biggest uh, gap that we're trying to bridge between, between the two professions. Um, that's one thing that we have been trying to encourage and uh, trying to set up the floor for um, see how we can uh, betterment the, the, that relationship. But we are, let's be honest and be realistic. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, issues within within that relationship with with which actually we have been trying to uh, improvise to some extent. Um, and it's, I don't know, when you look back into why uh, some vets don't get along with fairs or why some fairs don't get along with uh, veterinarians, uh, it could be by many things. And, and one example that I have uh, to look back is when I came out of school. Um, unfortunately, when you come out of school and when it comes into fairy or podiatry or anything that is related for uh, uh, foot lameness, um, there's not too much in the university programs. So. I think that's one of the culprits of the problem because then you as a young practitioner, um, you come out of vet school and and you're supposed to be able to uh, build that relationship with fairs, but you don't have the knowledge or the expertise to be able to uh, provide that that floor or that relationship, which bottom line, again, goes back to the well-being of the horse. And I've heard here, we're at the NEAEP talking right now, and I've heard veterinarians and farriers talk about having respect for the other and understanding the other side, and and you work on both. You're a veterinarian and you're a certified journeyman farrier. So where is the line? How would you help a veterinarian or a farrier bridge that gap to better work for the betterment of the horse? And and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you said that line because I always, actually used as an example there's boundaries to everything and I think that we as professionals have to be able to respect each other you know that's why with the NEAP we're the first organization that we include the fairs as practitioners as professionals and I have always said that we have to have that mutual respect and what I mean with that is as a veterinarian you have to know your boundaries you have to know your limits uh, you might have the knowledge you might have the anatomy you might have the pathophysiology of what's going on you might have the diagnosis you might have the treatment but then when you have to go to when it comes to ferry and what you have to provide for that horse that's when there's that fine line that you have to make sure that you don't cross because it's not the veterinarian side 
uh, or it's not the veterinarian's job to dictate or uh, I don't know how to exactly say it but or, 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 or actually just basically kind of prescribe exactly what the fair is supposed to do because you're taking away from him his professional aspect of it that's what they do that's what that's what their profession is based about uh, they they also have knowledge the you know with all the continued education and what they have been going through the ferry industry have put a lot of effort and to educate themselves as well so they can communicate with the with the veterinarian so I'll give you a scenario or an example you have a uh, uh, a veterinarian that might want to go ahead and dictate or prescribe or actually just kind of um, feel I'm not looking for the right, right word but it just kind of control or dominate uh, what it's supposed to be done to the horse and when you do that you're taking away uh, the expertise of the fair and not the only the expertise of the fair is when it comes to his knowledge but his skills is a skill uh, factor that we have into into ferry. You have to have the art to be able to do it. You have to take in consideration the the biomechanical aspects of that foot, and uh, and I think that's that line that we have to make sure that we don't cross when it comes to both profession, veterinarian as well and farriers as well. As a farrier, you have to be able to bring that side of your profession your knowledge that you have when it comes into your anatomy as well and then your skills when it comes into your profession as a, as a farrier and, and your skills. Uh, therefore it's important that the farrier doesn't cross that same line or have those boundaries that he's not trying to say or diagnose or treat or tell the vet how he should be doing his job. So I think that's the bottom line, the main thing is that both respect each other about their profession and both stays on their side, you know, line of the court or side of the court where, where they perform or, or, or practice their job. This episode of Disease Du Jour is brought to you by equinevetedu.com, a free online educational platform for veterinarians, vet students, and vet techs, brought to you by Equimanagement. Visit equinevetedu.com for free race-approved CE and courses on topics of current interest. And it's been really interesting here at the NEAEP where veterinarians have said, I want to tell the farrier what I want to accomplish and then let the farrier decide how exactly to do that because they will be more comfortable with one method than another rather than saying you must use this style shoe or something like that. And, and that's something that luckily with the past couple of years and with all the continuing educations and with the NEAP and everybody that is involved with that, we have been able to uh, better the industry to some extent because you know, it's like I said earlier today, you know, you might want to dictate or you might want to have a prescription of exactly how you want to do that horse. And uh, I think it's just better than instead of having a, a exact prescription or, you know, what kind of shoe and throwing lines in there. And when it comes to ferry, I mean, where it's going to be exactly the breakover, you know, it, it's the way, the best way for me to put it, it's instead of, you know, trying to shoe a red graph, let the farrier shoe the horse um, and with that we have uh, encouraged and we have uh, tried to come up with a better way of imp you know improving that relationship and that's basically not having that prescription it's just having a principle having a goal in mind and 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 that way communicate with the farrier and allow the farrier to use ex expertise and use his skills to 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 do what he feels comfortable with because as soon as you set him out of his comfort zone that's the perfect floor for failure and a lot of times that that's what happened between vets and farriers you set him up for failure he tries to do his best uh, but then you know, if things don't turn out the way they're supposed to turn out, then you get into the blaming. You get into, well, I did this because the veterinarian told me to do this. Or, you know, the veterinarian will flip it around and say, well, your fair didn't do what I told him exactly what to do. And a lot of times I think that's where there's that gap where we start losing some of that respect between the professions. I also like that I've heard several times when they're, when 
a speaker is talking to farriers to say it's not just okay but it's good to say i want to see what this foot looks like on the inside once I finish with the outside, let's let's work together on this. Yeah, and, and one thing that, uh, you know, for me having to wear both hats, this is the best way that I explain it. You know, you have the veterinarian that is trying to shoe the horse from inside out, but then you have the farrier that is trying to shoe the horse from outside in. So I think that to have a cohesive balance, if you actually put those two together, who ends up being the beneficial in this? It's not the vet or it's not the farrier. It's the well-being of the horse, which is what we're set ourselves to do. And is there any way that uh, you have found, since you do understand both sides of this issue, that can be used to kind of as a starting point to help maybe a relationship that hasn't worked so well or even to improve a relationship that is going well? I think it's like everything in life and I try to explain everything like to everybody. And it sounds simple, but we all know it's complicated, and that's communication. Uh, scenarios will be the, the horse goes to the vet, the vet look at the horse, he diagnoses and comes up with a treatment, and instead of talking to his farrier, he sends the horse with a prescription or instructions to the owner. Even if the prescription doesn't make it to the, to the farrier, then the owner is trying to translate the information that she got and a lot of times we all know that when you have the middle person you lose some of the the key factors in that translation and the same thing happens with the farriers when you put the the client as the middle person that's when we have trouble because we get into the he said she said the vet said that to do this or the farrier said you know the client said to do this and we get into that miscommunication so a lot of times I just you know, I encourage my clients every time that they, I go and shoe a horse for them or I look at a horse for them. One of the requests that I get all the time is, can you write me a prescription for my farrier? Or can you write me something? And I think that, I think that's where we miss a lot of the, the key factors that create that floor for failure. And I, you know, my, my, my answer to the owners is, it's actually better for me to just call your farrier, let me talk to him, because we actually have developed a, 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 a language where we can communicate. And unfortunately, a lot of times the clients don't have that language and it gets lost in translation and that's when we get into complications. So it's communication and it sounds simple, but we all know that as people, sometimes we prefer not to go that route because it's easier for us, but it's not easier for the other person on the other end. And what would you say, since you have been working in the industry as a veterinarian and in podiatry specialty, has been the, the most frequent issue that you see? Uh, basically, and I hate to bring it, you know, I hate to pick, a, pick apart, and, but I think it's been that loss in translation, translation with the owners. And I think you know, if we take the owner out of the picture, because what happens with owners is that they actually take it upon them and they tr try to dictate what they want, not what the vet recommended or not what the ferry recommended. And actually we get into uh, somebody trying to manipulate what the vet, the veterinarian was able to find, diagnose, treat, and same thing with the fair, and it goes it goes both ways in the road. And and I, again, I'm not picking picking the clients apart, but you know, it's like I have to tell people all the time: is like clients have to learn how to trust their vets and fairs, and leave it up to the professionals to do what they think is best for their horse. No, I think that's great. And we want to thank you today, Dr. Bross, for joining us on Disease to Sure to talk about veterinary fair relationship and how important that is to horses. Um, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, not necessarily. I appreciate the opportunity to to be part of this podcast. And, you know, the main thing is that I just want, want everybody to understand that uh, it's, it's a long road, but we're still working on it. It's not going to be perfect, and we're going to still have a little bit of uh, bumps in the road. But I just encourage everybody to to not only participate in continued education, but to teach our younger practitioners 
to not make the same mistakes that we have been making in the industry. Some good points. Well, thank you very much again, Dr. Bross, for joining us on Equimanagement's Disease Du Jour. And thank you to our listeners. You can hear previous and future podcasts of Disease Du Jour on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Pippa. We hope you'll join us again for a future edition of Disease Du Jour.